Hi, this is Forrest Judd from Hagerman & Company. Today I'm going to show you how to create a transient thermal analysis in Autodesk Simulation Mechanical along with a coupled thermal stress analysis. To do this I'm going to use a disc brake model. Notice I've created only one-eighth of the model. This is going to allow me to take advantage of symmetry within Simulation Mechanical to reduce the solution time. You might also notice that I've split the face of the disc to make it easier to apply a thermal load in the area where the shoe is going to actually at attach to the disc. So I'm going to start by launching the model into Simulation Mechanical 2016. And we'll choose our analysis type of transient heat transfer. Once within Simulation Mechanical, I'll begin by generating a mesh. I'll just stick with the defaults for now. And next, I'll apply materials. So we'll choose an aluminum material for the hub, making sure that our thermal properties are all specified. And for the disk, we'll choose steel. Notice in this particular case, this library material is missing a specific heat. Now I happen to know the specific heat of this material, but in a different unit set. So to make life a little easier, I'm going to change my unit set to the units that will let me apply that property directly. So we'll start with the MKS unit system. But we'll change that to custom so that I could specify a temperature in Kelvin. Now we can see I know the specific heat in joules per kilogram Kelvin that will allow me to modify that property with the value that I know without having to bother with any sort of conversion. Now that I've applied material properties, it's time to start creating some boundary conditions. So we'll apply a controlled temperature at the hub here of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which reminds me I should switch my units back to make it easier to work in the numbers that I have. And we'll apply a heat load to the disk. In this case, if we are approximating the heat load to the disk as the wheel slows, um, the heat load is actually going to decrease over time until the point where we've stopped where that load effectively becomes zero. At least we'll make that assumption for this analysis. So in this case, we're going to need to describe, because this is a transient analysis, how this load changes over time. And we do that with what's called a load curve. We're interested in a 20 second range, so at 20 seconds we'll have a multiplier, meaning the magnitude that we've applied, we want it to be full, so 1 times the magnitude at time 0, and 20 seconds later we want it to be ramped down to 0. Now you can add as many points to this table as you'd like to get as complex a curve as you need to describe your transient load. And if you notice, I picked the wrong surface here. So let's just adjust that and continue. Now that we have our loads properly applied, it's time to specify the parameters of our analysis. For a transient thermal analysis, uh, we effectively need to just specify the time. How much over what time interval are we interested in studying? And how many steps uh, would we like to break this up into? So we'll just say 10 steps. Uh, now we've applied a temperature to the interior of the hub, uh, but we have yet to apply any temperature data to any of the other nodes. And if we're talking about a transient analysis, it's going to be important for us to start at a point um, where uh, we have everything specified. We're interested in, in 
maybe from ambient. How quickly does this heat up? And as we're applying that load, the load is, in, is decreasing over time. So at some point, we're going to get we're going to reach where temperatures in the disk reach a maximum and then start to fall off again. So in this case, I want to set a default nodal temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe it's a warm day. So now that I've applied my boundary conditions and set my model parameters, uh, I'm ready to solve. And here we go. We now have some results. So we specified 10 time steps in our analysis parameters and a total time of 20 seconds. That means we're looking at the temperature every two seconds. And as we cycle through our load cases, which correspond to different times within the analysis, we can see the disk does indeed heat up. But then it eventually, if we take a close look at the legend over here, our maximum temperature does start to decrease at some point. We want a good way of determining at which point in time our load, our temperatures are at the maximum. So we can quickly create a graph from a node that's in an area of high temperature. And we can see about 16 seconds into the analysis is when our temperature reaches its, ma reaches its maximum value. So this is our worst case scenario. Um, Now, armed with this data, we're prepared to do a thermal stress analysis. We can use the temperature data, in this case, at time step 8, to provide a load to our thermal stress analysis. So we want a static stress with linear material models. We're going to assume that everything is linear in this problem. And this is going to allow me to copy my scenario into a new scenario where I already have I have the same mesh and the same material definitions. Um, I do need to make sure because we are looking at different properties now. We're in mechanical analysis, um, not a thermal, not just a thermal analysis. So um, I need to make sure that the materials that I've specified um, that they have all the necessary properties for a mechanical analysis, including my th thermal coefficient of expansion because we are uh, experiencing temperature differentials, Poisson's ratio, uh, density, and modulus of elasticity. So we'll just double check both of those. And now we're ready to apply our boundary conditions for the mechanical analysis. So the only loads we have in this case are really the thermal loads. Um, we do need to constrain the model, however. And I could take advantage of symmetry by indicating, for example, that these faces are sy symmetric in the direction of the x-axis. Similarly, these faces are symmetric in the direction of the z-axis. and the faces on the bottom of the model are symmetric along the y-axis. We should also review our contact type in simulation mechanical. If the modeler determines that surfaces are actually in contact, as you see here, it will assume that the default contact type should be applied. So in this case, we're assuming that the hub is bonded to the disk, and so we can leave this as our bonded condition. If we had a different contact type, we could either change the default here or explicitly define the contact type between those two surfaces. But for now, we'll just leave that as bonded. Now for our mechanical analysis parameters, we need to enable thermal solutions. And on the thermal tab, we need to make sure we load data not from the FEA editor. We're not applying temperature data to the nodes ourselves. We are pulling from another design scenario in this file. It happens to be design scenario one. And we weren't interested in the last time step. We were actually interested in 16 seconds time step eight. That was the maximum. That's our worst case scenario. 
Um, if any of the nodes happen to not have a temperature applied, we want to make sure we get our default temperature applied. And our last step here is to make sure that um, in our element definition that we have, we are communicating to the software what our ambient temperature is, our stress-free reference temperature. So if our hub is at maybe 80 degrees F, that's the ambient temperature, so 100 is a little bit elevated. We'll see a little bit of thermal expansion just by virtue of it being a hot day outside. Then, of course, significant expansion based on the temperatures of the disk um, as the pad touches it. All right, so with our constraints applied, uh, our loading applied from our first design scenario, we are now ready to solve. And here are our results. We're currently looking at our displacement magnitude. We can also review von Mises stress. We can see stress is highest in the areas of highest temperature, which we might expect. We can also closely investigate this region where we have mixed materials and differing thermal expansion. We're getting a bit, I believe, of, of stress in these slots because of uh, the differences. And of course, with that, like, as with other results, we can animate this to see how it would grow over time. This is exaggerated, um, but just get an idea of how the shape changes. Um, and if we want to communicate the disk as a whole, not just this eighth portion that we've modeled, we can enable mirror planes to make it look like we did the whole model, even though we only did an eighth to save some time. I hope you found this video informative and thanks for watching.